Welcome to Data Viz Dev Talk. I'm your host, Minhas Kazi. Our today's guest is Ben Collins. Ben is a freelance data analyst, developer, visualizer, and founder of the Collins School of Data. He's also a Google developer expert. Let's get started. Ben, welcome to the show. Thank you, Maz. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What got you interested in spreadsheets and scripting in the first place? Sure. So after college, I, I went into the finance world. And obviously, the, my, my bread and butter then is, is spreadsheets. So I'm spending all day uh, with data in spreadsheets, uh, with formulas, and, and gradually just became more and more comfortable with the formulas world. And it's a little bit like a rabbit hole. The deeper you get into it, the more you discover. and and so the formulas became sort of, let's find out how I can make these formulas uh, more efficient and, get, and, and make my, my work better. And then that led into the world of scripting and saying, OK, this is really interesting. How can I automate these processes I'm doing uh, and, and extend the power of the spreadsheets and, uh, and my work? So that was my first foray with spreadsheets. And that was sort of started 15 years ago, that journey, I guess. Uh, and then sort of in 2010-ish, I came across G Suite and the Google Sheets world and made that step across uh, into G Suite and Google Sheets and found AppScript pretty soon after that so I could continue that journey of learning and you know getting more from my spreadsheets. So I have to ask you this, uh, VLOOKUP or index maths? <laughs> a good question, and I've got feet in both camp, I'd say, uh, because I think that the VLOOKUP is a great one when you just need to do something uh, quick and easy, it works, it's great, as long as you know how to use it. And then the index match gives you a, bit, a lot more flexibility. It seems to be the question that divides the spreadsheet world in two. Uh, and I know that <laughs> in my old office, we had we had camps in both, uh, were advocates for both, and they were pretty fierce advocates for, for, <laughs> for each. But I think that um, I would say learn both. <laughs> you know, go, go and do the VLOOKUPs, and then, and then really it's not too difficult to jump across and learn index match and that then opens up tons more opportunities um, you know with what you can do with the index and and the match both separately and together so let's say I'm an analyst and I don't know anything about abstract um, why is it important for me and how do I get started sure so let's say uh, every week you create a report and you apply the same formatting you create the same chart um, you do a little bit of um, preparation with your data uh, and each week it's the same, and you're sort of spending 15 minutes, half an hour, an hour, doing this re pretty repetitive process, then that's a great contender for, for automation. And that's what scripts allow you to do. So, uh, you know, with just a few lines of code, you could transform some data, and then a few more lines of code, you can create a chart. Uh, and that's the power of, of App Script. You write that once, and then each week you can press run, and it will do those steps for you. Uh, so a great way to get started actually is to use the macro recorder. And what that is, is a, um, a built-in feature in the UI, so in the actual spreadsheet itself, where you can press a big red button, do your thing, which is sort of add some uh, formatting, create the chart, process your data, and then press stop. And, and that the, the macro recorder turns that into code in the script editor, editor which you can then just go and run when you want to repeat the action. So that's a great way to get started. And then from there, you can open up the script editor and see exactly the code that the macro recorder has created. And you'll start to see, uh, you know, even if you don't understand it at first, you'll start to recognize sections where they perhaps, you'll see some cell references and then you'll start to understand a little bit about how that code is interacting with the spreadsheets. Another way is um, custom functions. So custom functions are a way for you to write a little bit of app script to do something that's completely unique to your to your um, workflow. So you might create a function that uses Google Maps to to work out the distance between two points, and that you can just use that function then just in your Google Sheets without needing to keep rewriting code or, or going to external you know to, to the maps and doing that separately and then copying and pasting it back in sort of thing. So it's a lot of time saving. Switching gears. Um... How did you get started with Data Studio? So I remember back in 2016, uh, I was doing all the, 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 a lot of work with this with Google Sheets, and and then up pops onto the radar this new tool coming from Google that's a, 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 a business intelligence tool for the for self serve. In in other words, something that you're going to be able to use yourself to create these visualizations and reports. 
And so I was super interested because I'd, I'd worked in this space for a long time now. And so I'm always sort of interested in new tools and, and especially ones that will uh, extend the, the capabilities of what I'm doing with the tools I have right now. And so, yeah, I was super interested, jumped on it, um, got involved with the beta program and um, met, sort of collaborated with you on some feedback and, and wrote some blog posts, recorded some videos and, and that's sort of how it all sort of got started for me. One question I often hear from folks is that um, you can always build graphs and charts in spreadsheets and you can share that. Uh, what is the benefit of having a dedicated business intelligence tool or reporting tool like Data Studio? That's a great question and I think one of the, the principal benefits is first of all, it, it's very simple and easy to use to create very professional looking reports. So with a spreadsheet, it's a little bit more work to to make it look like a, a report, a dashboard rather than a spreadsheet that just has some charts in. And so maybe that's uh, important so that your, you know, your stakeholders look at this report and take it a little more seriously than just perhaps it's a thrown together spreadsheet. So it, it makes your professional reports um, very easy to create. Another huge benefit is it, it separates the data from the, the visualization by, by having a, a dedicated report that people can interact, interact with, with the, with the data in a separate layer that they can't touch. It just makes sure that that data is, is nice and secure. You have the unique capability of looking at this from a both um, analyst point of view and from a developer point of view. Uh, thinking from that angle, how do you think Data Studio Data Studio can be beneficial to small and medium businesses? What it does is it democratizes data, it opens up the data to so many more people. And so uh, both building with Data Studio or being given a report and interacting with it and using a report are both very, very intuitive and easy. Uh, they have that same interface as the G Suite um, tools, so it sort of feels familiar already. And then building the actual reports is it is really quick and really easy and so it really lowers that barrier to entry for people to go and explore their own data and then also just using those reports if your if a report is shared with you it gives you a lot of options to interact with the data to drill down into the data um, in, a, in a very visual way. I love the demo that you built with the International Space Station um, position so you could see the position of ISIS any point of time of like where it was. Um, tell us a little bit about that, like how did you build that? Sure, so it was right around the time actually that Google was introducing the, the community connectors, which are the, the connectors so that you can connect to third party services with Data Studio directly and pull in that data from another web service into Data Studio, which is like super cool. I was really excited about this. And I was looking around for some examples to just try this, try this out because there was a couple of examples on the Google website, which I tried. Uh, and then I thought, you know what, I, I wonder if there's a way to plot the position. I just, I sort of, I'm always interested in space stuff. <laughs> I follow the, you know, rocket launches and that kind of stuff, so I'm a bit of a space geek. I searched around, found an API that publishes the position of, in latitude and longitude of the International Space Station and thought, that, let's, <laughs> let's see if we can make this work. And uh, it was a great first connector to build because the authentication was well, there was no authentication, so it was it was a nice simple connector. Pull in that Latin long, and plot it on the world map in a in a nice dashboard, and then add some touches like a picture and sort of a current date and things like that, just to to, to make it look a little bit more polished. You have built a number of these connectors, both as like open source and for your clients. What does your workflow look like when you're trying to build a connector for a new data set? Like where do you start? What is your workflow? So I would I, I always start by spending some time with that service and. It depends, if it's a service that I use myself, obviously I'd be familiar with it, but if it's a client that I'm working for and it's their service or a service they use, then what I like to do is make sure I go and get a demo account, uh, spend some time with the tool so I know, I understand what the, the context is and I can start to understand you know, why would somebody want that data in Data Studio and what, what are their plans to do with it. And I think it's really important that you have that that context before you just jump in and rush to build the connector so that you know, you know when that data, when you're bringing that data through that pipeline, what, where it's going to end up and what it might look like. Um, so I start with the tool, the service, spend some time there. Next thing is to go and find any documentation about the API. Spend some time reading that, see if there are any tutorials or guides to just have a look at and understand. And then uh, what I do is I open up a Google Sheet and the script editor and build a connection to that API from my Google Sheet first. 
and, and start putting the data into Google Sheets. And the reason I do that is because I don't need to worry then about the, the data studio architecture yet. I can focus purely on the connection to the API, uh, start getting some data back, maybe check the authentication and how that works, and then start passing that data uh, and making sure that I've got the API piece all built and sort of rock solid. Then I can open up Data Studio and, or rather, the app script file for Data Studio, put in the boilerplate, build the plumbing, and then plug in that API piece finally. Uh, and that's my approach so that I, rather than trying to sort of immediately jump to the Data Studio file and, and build it in one go. So hopefully some of our audience would benefit from that. Um, talking about the audience, can you share your favorite Data Studio tip with them? Sure, so I was thinking about this a little bit before I came in today and I was racking my brain for something super specific, maybe a, a neat little unique feature or something. And then I sort of realized that actually my, my top tip really is to spend some time learning about the best practices uh, for data visualization. So knowing the best chart type to use for the data you have, how to make sure that, that your, your dashboard is as impactful as possible because that will have a bigger impact than sort of focusing too much on the tiny granular details. If you really can make sure that your data pops off the page and gets that message across as efficiently and effectively as possible, then you'll get maximum impact from your, from your dashboards. Ben, thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much, Manaz. You can check out Ben's blog and his courses on his website. Link is in the description. For more Data Studio content, make sure to subscribe to the GCP channel. You can always visit our website at developers.google.com slash data studio. Until next time, keep building more awesome biz.